unsubstantiated claims about the health and deceived consumers. This is the ugly truth about barefoot shoes. I, like many other health aficionados, say these shoes bad, these shoes good. Now why? All the same exact reasons this lawsuit said were invalid. They strengthen your muscles, improve range of motion, help with balance, improve your posture, proprioception, reduce a lower back pain and injury. Are these clown shoes really fooling us all? I've been wearing barefoot shoes like this for over three years now and I love them, but are they actually as good as they say they are? Today I'm gonna to break down the five different theories and why they may or may not be true. Now first, brief summary. What and why barefoot shoes? Barefoot shoes are minimalist shoes, so they have to have a couple factors. There's zero drop, so that means from the heel to the toe, there is no height increase. They have a wide toe box, so your toes can splay out. There's no arch support on the inside. They have a very thin and flexible sole, so it allows your feet to really feel what's on the floor beneath you. And the argument is we've been lied to from Nike and Adidas and that these minimalist shoes are the way to go. So let's break down these five components. Now don't sell my feet pixel but if you have wide feet like me, normal shoes typically don't fit. So the argument is if you have a narrow toe box, your toes are gonna get squished together and your feet are gonna malform into this. Since I've been wearing barefoot shoes for a couple years now, you can still see kind of like my pinky toe is a little inverted, but if I splay my toes, there's so much more space. But that last toe right there is getting squished in probably from narrow toe boxes. So if I take the barefoot shoe and I place my foot right above it, you can see how my toes perfectly line up. If I splay them out, it gives them just enough space so I can grip the floor really well. Now if I take the regular Adidas shoes and I put these on, if I try to splay, my toes get crushed. So actually they need to be squished inside of here. If you try to stand and you squish your toes together, right? What happens? The stability of your foot is a little bit harder to stay up. Maybe you want to fall down, right? But if you splay your toes as wide as possible, it's much easier to balance on that foot. And the data has shown that increased foot weakness leads to more falls as you age. And although the Apple Watch has fall detection, falling as you get older can really be detrimental to your life. This toe box theory, I do subscribe to. I know that if I'm doing yoga and I get to splay out my toes, it's much easier to balance in those one-legged postures. Now, when I buy shoes, I try to buy shoes that have a wider toe box. But if I need to fit in with everyone and buy shoes that everyone else does, like the Adidas Ultra Boost, I buy shoes that are two sizes too big. So this way the front is way too long and I tend to fall only once a day. I have a broken face, but healthy feet. Now, when it comes to the heel drop, look at that massive height difference. This, there's no heel drop. It's literally touching the floor. Whereas here, we have this massive rise at the back. Actually for performance, Having this lifted heel can actually make you run faster. But if you're not running, why are you wearing these shoes? That's where the argument of a zero drop heel comes in for regular everyday wear. So why is that heel drop so, oh, this feels really good. <laughs> What's the argument behind having a zero drop shoe rather than something with a rise on the heel for everyday wear? If my heels are lifted, now I have to bend my knees a little bit more. I have to lean my chest a different direction just so I can stay upright. If I'm standing like this all day, or if I'm walking like this, I'm more likely to have an incorrect hold in my posture, thus causing knee pain and lower back pain. Now, I have lower back pain, but have barefoot shoes fixed it? No, but barefoot shoes have fixed cancer. That's a joke. <laughs> but with zero drop shoes, it allows me to find the natural posture in my spine and my hips. But how important is this? I'm not really sure. But if it's gonna give me that extra one to 2% benefit by just wearing these shoes, I might as well take it. Now the second argument to that is ankle mobility. If I wear zero drop shoes, I'm going to be able to increase my ankle mobility. When I'm walking, for example, I actually have to put more effort in to lift my foot off the ground and land forward. If I have a heel drop, I actually don't even have to do much. I can just land my foot down. So because of that, I'm actually weakening the muscle on the front of my shin. So the argument is, if I'm wearing zero drop shoes, I have to activate that muscle, lift my foot up and land, creating a little bit more ankle mobility, right? If my heel is lifted and I try to lean my knee forward, I can get it just as far with less effort. So although this might be great for increasing running performance in a race, for everyday walking, it might actually be better to go this way. Now, as a non-expert YouTuber that I am, these are the theories that I've read about online and I do subscribe to some of these beliefs, so I've continued to wear barefoot shoes. Although there are some risks involved in potentially increasing injury if you don't transition in a slow enough time period, I've found it extremely valuable and helpful and subjectively, I like wearing barefoot shoes, so I do. If you do plan to buy some, I have my favorite ones linked down below. If you use my codes and my links, it helps support the channel. Now third is arch support. And the best way to explain that to you is to actually go grab every single barefoot shoe that I own. Oh, so, as you can see, the time it takes to put these shoes on is way faster than the time it takes to put the barefoot shoes on just because, you know, my foot doesn't fully fit in here. A little bit harder to slide on, but bam, they fit like a glove. From what I've read online, because everything on the internet is true, is that arches are good, 
No arches are bad. I saw this really cool video on YouTube from Barefoot Strength YouTube channel, and he showed how if you have an arch, your foot is able to absorb a lot of the shock from running and jumping. And because like running, you can have three to four times the force impact of your own body weight when you're running. So if you don't have an arch, a lot of that force is gonna go into your bones, tendons, muscles, ligaments, and everything like that. So arch, less force, absorb, spring, good. It's one of these like running shoes that I have, right? There is arch support. There's a little bit of a hump on the inside of the shoe. It's gonna provide the ability for me not to have to lift my own arch up. Whereas one of these nice, beautiful barefoot shoes don't provide any arch support. And the argument is that I need to use muscles, ligaments, and the strength of my own foot to keep my arch up. And supposedly, if you wear barefoot shoes long enough, you build the strength and increase the muscles so that way your arch is much stronger. Now, am I gonna wear these shoes? on a date, probably. If there's someone out there who's gonna let me wear these barefoot shoes on a date, let me know. I think that'd be a fun video. Now, another factor is I did injure myself while running, and part of that could have been due to a weakness in my foot or overuse injury. But supposedly, if you can strengthen the naturally powerful aspects of your arch, there's gonna be a lot of benefits. There are some studies that showed that people with flat feet just were more prone to shin splints, had bad ankle mobility and stability. So anything I can do to improve or strengthen my arch is good. Now, does having arch support in your shoe versus not having arch support in your shoe mean you're gonna have a better arch? That is for you to decide. I really do appreciate having all these barefoot shoes. I can only wear so many, so I keep my secondary shoes inside of here. I never thought I'd turn into a classic American who would rent out storage. Kind of scares me. And now lastly is the argument about ground feel. So if you're walking on a hard concrete like this, you're definitely gonna feel it. But if you're walking on something more like that, right? you wanna be able to feel the floor, you wanna be able to feel the ground. In that regard, the argument is having a very thin and flexible sole allows your foot to morph to the floor. You're able to feel the bumps on the floor, feel the earth and how it's just so different and you gotta be one with nature, I guess, right? If I take my hand here and I put my hand on the dirt, it's gonna feel one way, but if I put my hand in a glove and I try to touch the dirt, it's gonna to feel totally different. It's gonna to feel very flat and boring. So the argument is with more sensory feedback on the floor, you're gonna have increased motion, freedom of flexibility, and it's just a natural way to move. Now, when it comes to fashion-wise, barefoot shoes aren't really the most popular because they look kind of like clown shoes sometimes. There are some shoes, like I have some dress shoes that you can wear. And then in terms of activities, if you're weightlifting, I like to wear barefoot shoes all the time. If I'm going around for a stroll, I will switch between barefoot shoes and cushion shoes. And then when I'm hiking, that's when I will have actually like barefoot shoes, but they have an extra millimeter of thickness, so there's more cushion. There's like these barefoot boots and if you want to maximize the barefoot feel you can actually take the insoles out of the barefoot shoes and that will just make them even less cushion and less support but I would only do that if you've been wearing barefoot shoes for a while and lastly socks if you're wearing like regular socks like that also has the potential to squeeze your feet together another thing to keep in mind you can get toe socks which will then allow you to actually splay your toes a little bit more so it just gets more and more complicated as time goes on and if you really want to go to the next level you can get toe spacers and actually try to separate your toes I bought a pair but I just don't use them very often all right so I just got this notification that I got a new Amazon delivery, a new Amazon barefoot shoe, so let's go check those out and open those up. I think the real question is, are these the best, cheapest barefoot shoes that money can buy? I'll have them linked down below. I have a video where I compare every single of my favorite barefoot shoes, but since I just got these, I'll give you an update. Sizing wise, I'm about a 10 and a half, but I got an 11 in Vivos, so I just round up because they don't do half sizes. Vivo Barefoot is definitely my favorite. I have a code down below, code Shervin, I think. Feel Grounds is another one of my favorites. And then Vibrams, if I'm really feeling like I want the maximum health benefits. And then these ones are the new Amazon ones. These are $40. So if you're just getting into barefoot shoes, I recommend starting cheap because you don't know if you're gonna like them or wanna keep wearing them. These are the, what the? They're definitely two different styles online. But looking at them here, they look like the same exact barefoot shoe. This is the sneaky part about Amazon. They do weird stuff like this. These are the Witten shoes. I got size 44 European, which was like 11, I think, US. They definitely have much thicker soles compared to the Vivos. They do look a tad bit shorter in terms of style. Like, I like the style. These are the Primus Light Knits, which are brand new. I love this new style. Um, I just wish it was kind of like a slip-on. I want these to be super easy to put on. These kind of look like everyday cross-training shoes that people will wear. They've got this little piece on the side. Wide-ish toe box, which is good. I think wide toe box is the most important thing when it comes to wearing any kind of shoe. I think I subscribe to that the most. Cushion, I think it's important to have cushion, especially since I walk around New York City. So I do have these shoes called Ultras, A-L-T-R-A, and I run in those. So wide toe box, but lots of cushion. Oh, 
So in terms of length, like they're good, but these are really tight. They look cool though. I've got a little bit of space at the front. They're kind of small, so I'm probably gonna return them now that I think about it. My biggest takeaway is the science isn't foolproof. There's no one saying that barefoot shoes are bad for you, and there's no science fully proving that barefoot shoes are good for you. The ugly truth is that no one is really able to agree on whether barefoot shoes for walking, barefoot shoes for running are actually good for you. Vivo Barefoot did have a study that showed if you wear their shoes for six months, your feet are much stronger. But then again, they are a business and their entire goal is to sell more shoes. In terms of the Vibrams, Vibrams barefoot shoes lawsuit, it was settled and they paid everyone out for these false claims that they weren't able to prove. But the biggest thing I want to bestow upon you is critical thinking. Don't just take everything you hear online. Think about it, understand why something works and why it doesn't work. I'm all about just blind trust. I'm still waiting to see what Huberman says, because we all know whatever he says is probably the truth. But subjectively, I do enjoy wearing my barefoot shoes, so I'm gonna continue doing it. And also, I do feel like my feet are stronger. I don't know if there's a way to measure that. If anyone knows how, let me know. I know a lot of weightlifters, powerlifters recommend wearing Vans or any flat-footed shoe or even just like doing your strength training in barefoot. But some gyms don't allow you to be barefoot. So the next best thing is probably barefoot shoes. I think Vans do have a tight toe box. So if you can get a nice wide toe box and a flat surface, even better for you. That's my biggest recommendation is start wearing barefoot shoes at the gym. If you're doing running, get wide toe box ultras potentially with zero drop. But I think 80% of the time I do wear barefoot shoes. The rest of the time I'm wearing my regular ultra boost from adidas just because like i need the extra height and they're just easier to slip on but other than that my go-to's are vivos i do have a whole bunch of others and sometimes even with my suit i have a, a pair of dress barefoot shoes which is kind of neat but like that's a little excessive if you haven't worn zero drop or barefoot shoes it's gonna hurt it's gonna take a time for your muscles your ligaments your tendons to adapt start slowly you know maybe 10 percent of your mileage wear barefoot shoes and slowly work your way up over time there is no rush this is a long game we're trying to live as long as possible. Overall, these look clean for 40 bucks. This is a great starter barefoot shoe. But if you're just like, oh, I don't know which shoes to wear for snow, for different weather, I do have one where I wore 23 different barefoot shoes. Go watch that video linked right here.